really at seven, which would be, a, you know, obviously a happy medium for everybody. But it wasn't because it includes a $17 million payday this year. And remember, Aaron Judge has filed for the largest arbitration award in history. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, $21 million from the Yankees, which still has to be heard. And you think that's going to get contentious? You know, I, I honestly, and I understand where Aaron Judge is coming from. It's his money. I don't want to tell him what to do or how to do it. Um, when you think back to a number of players over the years that have had same situations that have either turned down money or even this year, guys like Carlos Correa reportedly turned down a 10, uh, 10 years, $275 million contract by the uh, Detroit Tigers and ended up signing uh, with the Minnesota Twins for $105 million with three years of opt-outs and all sorts of nonsense. I mean, when you think about a seven-year, $213.5 million contract, that's $30.5 million per year. He's 30 years old. I told you last week that he got started late because he spent three years in college. That's right. This all has to do about his age and its timing. And yet, Yankees want to keep him. Of course they want to keep him. They would have never made an offer anything remotely close to this. They did want to keep him. And you also have to remember, you know, this is a guy that has missed 156 games since 2017. And they're, you know, to me, I really kind of feel like the Yankees went above and beyond now. Aaron Judge is taking a huge chance here. And I think you think back to Juan Gonzalez. Uh, he turned down uh, an eight-year, $140 million contract. Juan Gonzalez! And the reason I say this, the reason yeah. I say this is because he turned down an eight-year, $140 million contract. He had two MVPs at that time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Detroit offered him that. He said no. And four years later, he was out of the league, and he basically made a fraction of what he was offered That's back right. then in 2000. Also remember that A-Rod opted out on his contract with the Yankees and got a 10-year $275 million yeah. contract. And that's, you know, he opted out right in the middle of his contract back in two, after the 2007 season, mm -hmm. right in the middle of the World Series. I remember Craig and I had just started back then, and I was like, man, I— I can't believe A-Rod did this during the World Series. Yeah, well, this that was asinine. sort of on brand for him at the time, wasn't it? Yeah, oh, man, it was asinine. Yep. And I think, he re I think he regretted the way it went down. Now, you know, you have every right to opt out. I don't know if the Yankees really offered any opt-outs in here for uh, Aaron Judge. But I will say, he is taking a huge, huge yeah. gamble. So I wouldn't have done this if I were him, but I respect the fact that he's doing it. And I am completely floored with the confidence that he has, with the injuries that he have, he has had throughout his career. For him to sit up there and go, I'm going to talk to 30 teams at the end of the year, the Yankees will be one of those teams. To basically say, I'm going to have a great year, and someone's going to want to pay me the money that I expect at the end of this year takes balls galore, and I respect him for that. However... If that were me, with Aaron Judge's career to this point, I would have taken the money, and I do think it's a huge gamble. And quite frankly, because of this and the way he's handling it, I'm rooting for him a little bit more. I really am. Because, I mean, you can look at it like he could have taken $233 million and he's, he's basically gambling, what, $67 million? Um, because he's probably the most he's probably going to get is at $300 million range, you would nah, think. I, I just, I, I'm telling you, I don't see it. I see a lot of teams around the league, especially like the Red Sox. The Red Sox are, are, are a team that are are hard, fast in, in their negotiation when it comes to guys that are over 30. I, I just, I kind of feel like that's what's happening around the league. Now, there could be some team out there like Detroit uh that could go out and spend the money because they know as soon as they get him, or even San Francisco. You know, he's a he's a he's a California kid. I can't see oh, the yeah. Dodgers going after him. But I, you know, the thing about it is, is that it's. It, I know it's it's really tough, and it's and it's, it's unique for him. The other thing I was wondering about, and I and I couldn't go back, and I I'm not a Yankee fan. Everybody out there knows this, and I didn't dive deep enough into knowing whether I. And I do remember. When he first got to the Yankees and he was in their minor league system, everybody's talking judge and judge and judge. I just wonder, I'm trying to think back, and maybe you can answer this or one of our callers can answer this, one of the, the listeners out there. Did the Yankees hold him back prematurely to stop his time clock from starting in terms of our no, arbitration? Like or did he, they bring him up when they were supposed to bring him up? And maybe this, instead of the last year of arbitration being the age of 30, maybe the last year of arbitration could have been 29. From what I remember of that time, it wasn't one of those, oh, they're definitely holding him back. 
he was one of those guys that kind of burst on the scene. He was a prospect, but he wasn't like one of those can't-miss guys. And he got better and better and better and sort of was like a late bloomer. Yeah. And then he came up and was like, oh, my God. You know, and he was someone who was was known for striking out, you know, was inconsistent, and then finally burst onto the scene and was a superstar. Okay, so that so that that doesn't go into the negotiation. It wasn't like then. they were holding him back. Right, okay. You know, so, I mean I mean sometimes you remember that whole argument about yeah, holding yeah. a guy back in service time and, and starting them in the minors from and what I remember. The of from what I, I remember. Yeah, I don't yeah. I, and I'm wondering if 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 um, maybe there is somebody out there that knows this. If in fact he felt like that was the case. Mm -hmm. Then that also makes he this, might have yeah. that then that, that also un, you makes me understand a little bit more why maybe he and his agent are thinking you know they screwed me back then and you know I want twenty one million this year. Um, I, I I don't I don't even know if the seven years added on to this year at two thirteen is enough. I don't know. It doesn't sound like it. And if he's comparing himself to Mike Trout. You know, he's making a huge mistake because Mike Trout has been a three-time MVP. Now, three years into his big contract at $450 million, um, I think it's four hundred. He's at $430 million. You got to remember, he's only played 90 games in the yeah. last three years. Mm -hmm. I mean, and this is, this would be like a nightmare scenario for the Yankees if, if Aaron Judge over the next three years signs this big contract and all of a sudden there goes the oblique. Well, I mean, I think that's why they didn't go that extra mile to make sure that he got signed was because of the injuries. There's no other reason why age and injuries. You know, he's not 25 years old, and he's missed a lot of time. So, I mean, I, I think that Aaron Judge, who seemed upset too, by the way, that the contract numbers were out there, and I actually don't blame Brian Cashman for broadcasting that because he has gotten crushed with this offseason. All we've heard is, and we've said it, Yankees don't seem like the same Yankees. Yankees seem cheap. Hal is not George. All of these things over and over again. So they couldn't come out of this thing looking like they weren't making a legitimate offer to Aaron Judge because that would have compounded everything that we've been saying about their offseason. So Brian Cashman in a PR move had to do that. Stuff. All right, so um, whose whose money is Brian Cashman spending? <clears throat> um, the Steinbrenners' money. Well, the Steinbrenners and uh, other partners. Yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. Just you know, it's not like uh, the Steinbrenner family is worth. Well, I guess they are worth whatever uh, their fraction of the Yankees are. But Hal Steinbrenner controls the Yankees, not Brian Cashman. You know, Brian Cashman can. Go to Hal Steinbrenner and said, you know, this is what we think is fair. This is what the numbers tell us to do. And by the way, you know, we're probably going out a year too far because, you know, this this contract at the end of it is going to be like A-Rod's contract. Uh -huh. It's going to be like, you know, we've had bad contracts here before. And, you know, we're heading down the road of having a potentially another bad contract. So it is Hal Steinbrenner. It falls at the feet of Hal Steinbrenner. So Brian Cashman is doing what ownership tells him to do. He advises ownership, this is what we think is fair. These are all the numbers that we've looked at. These are all the comparables. I mean, you know, it is analytics on steroids when it comes to these contracts. And, you know, Hal Steinbrenner has to say yay or nay. He has to say, okay, we are holding fast on our $17 million offer this year in arbitration. That's $7 million more than he made last year. Aaron Judge wants to double what he made last year to $21 million. Mm -hmm. And the Yankees are holding at 17, and they were holding at 17 to the point where part of this contract was this year stays at 17, and then it kicks in as a seven-year, potentially, you know, potentially, not potentially, but it really is a seven-year extension. And the number is 30.5 million AAV. So I, I figured this is what it was going to be. I, I, you know, I said three years, I mean, I seven years, 210. I, that, that's what I think I said. And so when these numbers came out, I wasn't shocked. Because I felt like it was going to be close and that the Yankees were willing to go to 38, but they were not willing to go to 39. And when I mean that, I mean, I'm talking age. And they really were not going to move up to like 34, 35, 36. So million. is it over between these two? Is Aaron Judge and the Yankees a marriage that's going to end at the end of this year? That's really the question. I just think I think Aaron, what Aaron Judge should do. Uh, what I would do, I would ask my agent to do this, and I don't, you know, I'm, I think the Yankees' offer would probably stay on the table. It, you know, meaning throughout Aaron, this season. Yeah, I, I think the, I, I believe that it would be. I mean, if Aaron Judge went back and said, you know, I've had second thoughts, it looks like a good contract, I'll take it. But if I, if I were him, I would say to my agent, okay, look, how many guys have been in my situation, and how many guys have been screwed, 
And Juan Gonzalez comes to mind. You know, not everybody could be A Rod, where you could just opt out in the middle of the World Series. And the and the and I'm telling you, the Yankees rue the day that they they signed that extension with him. Yeah, no, even though course. they won a World Series two years later, I'm telling you, they yeah, rue the no, day that they signed that extension. Uh, no, from the the uh, at the top of his game athlete perspective, you know, it's going to be very hard, in my opinion, to change. I'm asking you now to change Aaron Judge's mind. So take yourself back to you win an MVP. Aaron Judge just came off a really good season. He finished second in an MVP a couple of years ago to Altuve, uh, who was cheating. Alvin, but he's not an MVP. But I All right, but he hasn't been. But he hasn't actually won it, but he's coming off a good season. He feels great about himself. He's heading into this year thinking, I'm going to have the year of my life. I'm going to show these guys up. I'm going to hit free agency, and I'm going to get every penny. That's well, what he's thinking. If, if he does, then God— Wouldn't you God, have it, dude? Well, I'm just saying, if if he does that, then God bless him. I'm just telling you that it's not like the Yankees didn't make what I consider a very serious offer. But you know what I'm saying? That's right. where his mentality yeah, is Yeah, I know. Of course right it is. Yeah. I mean, and, and look, I want him to stay here. I, you know, I, I think he's a terrific player. I think he's a— uh, I, you know, if I'm a Yankee fan, I don't want to see 99 in right field for the Mets. That's for sure. I certainly don't want to see 99 in right field for the Red Sox. Although I, the Red Sox aren't going to go to numbers that he would want simply because they've already shown that they're not going to, you know, put these big numbers out there for these guys well over 30 at the end of their contracts. So um, I, I just, it, it's one of those really weird things where it's a ton of money. And he made a decision in his life. Now, I, I obviously none of us were there when he made this decision. I don't know why he made it. Uh, he maybe he can explain it. But he decided to go to college, and he decided to go to college for three years. These are the three years right now we're talking about from twenty-seven to thirty. That if he were twenty-seven, believe me, they they would do the contract, they'd do the ten-year deal, and it would be like three hundred and probably fifty million dollars. If if he were doing what he were doing prior to being, you know, turning 27 years old. But now that he's 30, it, it puts it in a whole different realm. And he's got to understand how teams look at it. And he's got to believe, or his agents gotta believe, like, like to me, Correa is another example. So he turned down 10 years, 275 million from the Tigers. And he signed a three-year, hundred nine million dollar deal with the uh, the Twins. I think it's one hundred nine, hundred five, somewhere around there. And he has opt outs, thinking that he's going to get a huge deal from somewhere else. I just, I, I don't know if that's going to happen. I don't know where baseball's going. All I know is that if the player understands where the team is coming from, then this is a number. While if I could figure it out well in, in advance, I'm sure they could have figured it out. Yeah, I mean, it just was so awkward. Opening day, press conference, Aaron Judge, we played in the morning. Then Brian Cashman's press conference saying there was no deal. Then Aaron Judge after the game. It was just, it cast a cloud over what ended up being a very, very exciting comeback win on opening was, day. It was, too. A good, it was a good weekend for them. It was great baseball all weekend for both the Mets and the Yankees. And I, 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 I don't know. It's, uh, I, I think it's a, I personally think it's a fair offer. Um, his agent obviously does not think so. I don't know if they went to twenty-one million this year, and then the, the contract. So you would I'm add on four an extra million, four million dollar difference that made him not sign it. Maybe you go to two twenty. I don't. I don't know. I, I look. It's a fair deal. I think it's a fair deal. I really do. I. I. I, I don't know what to tell you, especially with his age, his history of injury. And the fact that this is going to go out to age 38. No, I mean, I think it's a fair deal as well. And I would have taken it if I were Aaron Judge. But, man, if he ends up going and finishing this season and having a great year and going out there and getting every penny, that's going to be a, a huge flex in his favor. Well, the, the other things that now become in play are the things that we talked about last week is the potential trade option at the trading deadline. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the red bell so you're notified when we have new content.